Hey, welcome back to the internet. We built this table the last time. I'm gonna go ahead and make myself uh, some proper clamps, but uh, here's a ad hoc way of clamping it. I just uh, drilled a through hole and put in a wood screw. Now these are just number eight drywall screws. Uh, I believe they're like one and a quarter inch long. Uh, so we'll see if this is going to be rigid enough to hold my workpiece as I try to make a proper uh, clamp. It'll be in the same vein as those uh, ShopBot and uh, you see them all over the place, these types of clamps. You'll see in a moment what I mean. But uh, sit back. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> Alright, we just had some minor technical difficulties. I don't know if you can see that from your vantage point, but somehow that, this pulley here, has risen up on the shaft high enough now that for this belt to be level, it is almost barely on here, and then over here, it's barely on the bottom side. So we had our belt just slip off uh, a moment ago. Luckily, I was here and caught it before we had catastrophe. So let's see if we can fix this real quick. Okay, we um, definitely started kind of schmooing up the end here. Should have had air blast for getting into these deep crevices or something. I should have been hitting it with more air. It was not evacuating the chips at all. See what I got. All right, so I didn't go deep enough. Uh, we're still connected. Looks like we need to go down another hundred thou. I am going to go ahead and declare that a rousing success. Come on, you. Break away! 
Oh, criminy. I didn't even think about that. The astute amongst you will have noticed that I did not redo these two center portions when I made the outer portion deeper. Um, <laughs> and because I'm too lazy um, to throw this away, well, lazy is not the right word. I, I've invested a lot of money in this. And by that I mean my time. So I'm going to go ahead and use the metal cutting bandsaw. And why, yes, I do sleep better at night knowing I have this to what I believe is the correct depth here for cutting this. Um, got a piece of wood here so that I can push it, keep her flat up against the fence. And I've got another piece of wood here to push her on through. We've also got the very fine tooth blade that so it's less likely to catch and fling it around. Uh, usually the rule of thumb is three, uh, three teeth need to be in contact at any given time to keep it from going crazy and breaking teeth. Um, sorry, I can't, ha I can't face it this way so you could see it cut through. That'd be an awesome shot, but, you know, life. Life gets in the way. Engage! Safety squints. Close enough. So one of the big experiments here was I'm. This was according to Inventor. Uh, the this should be big enough for me to put a ten twenty four tap or a ten thirty two tap in there, according to the interwebs. So with that in mind, ten twenty four. All right. Let's see if we can tap this hole successfully. I mean, this will be nice in the future because then we can uh, we can get this dialed in now. That means in the future we should be able to designate uh, holes um, right into the project if they need to be threaded. Um, usually these types of taps will also do a little bit of cutting on the side, so if it's not exactly round, it'll usually uh, work its way through regardless. I'm sure you've seen these around. Uh, they're on pretty much all your standard routers, you know, maker bots and stuff. Yeah, so all I did was make a channel in the center here to accept a number six drywall screw, uh, and it's countersunk around the edge, like that. And then this is supposed to give you clearance uh, for your bit to go real close to it without hitting the spindle, is the idea. Uh, so yeah, you would uh, you'd set this to an appropriate depth to act as a, a fulcrum point. So this is a number six one and a quarter inch long screw, and the idea is we will get like that next to the workpiece that we want to clamp. Uh, pretend that that's not there. And that's in there. Good and tight. We'll pull out the original screw that was holding this down. Yeah. I'd say it's got a good amount of holding power. So. I think what we'll do now is use this over here, take this screw out, reset our G55 over to here, and then redo this whole thing, but over here. Yeah, so here's a way of bootstrapping your way into some clamps, um, a cheap clamping method, and it lets you use these uh, really weird look, you know, scraps that you might not be able to use with a regular jaw. And uh, at least this method we've proven thus far has the holding power for aluminum work with an eighth inch bit.
Sorry about that, battery died on the other camera without me realizing it, so we're gonna do this again. So these are the clamps we just made. This is a, another scrap piece of aluminum uh, offcut from the stiffening project uh, for these things back here. Uh, so I stopped the program and let's start running it again. What's going on with this thing? I think my press fit is no longer working, and I need to get me some glue or something. My little pinhole all the way through has screwed me over. Create a weak point. So we're going to have to redo this gear, except uh, without these holes, I think. Even still, it's, uh, it's trying to hold together here. I think we'll be fine. Get rid of these holes, and make the shell as thick as I can make it, and that should, uh, that should work for the future. I guess we've demonstrated that you can go ahead and bootstrap your way into clamping, and um, 
and that. We've also demonstrated that if you're going to make your own 3D printed gears, um, don't put a hole so that it weakens the cross section. <laughs> Thanks for watching.